guys, I have a super big announcement to make on the channel. We are partnering with Artec Performance in Australia. I'm so pleased to announce I'm going to be going single turbo. Sorry for my voice, guys. I'm getting over a cold, but I need to get this video done because my vacation is almost over. But let's take a look at these, this Artec Performance manifold. This is a one-piece solid cast manifold. So what's nice about it, it's not going to crack like a lot of the other manifolds out there on the market. This is kind of the new tech out of Australia. I saw this for the SR20 on Adam LZ's channel. I've wanted one ever since. Thank you very much to Ben. I reached out to Ben. There's lots of stuff going on in the background with my channel that you guys don't know about, but it took me several months of communicating with Artec Performance who partner with me, progress with the GTR build. So thank you very much to Artec Performance. We also went with their heat blanket. So this is a very nice blanket. It's going to help with heat management in the engine bay because we're going to be going see the turbo. It's going to generate a lot of heat and it's going to keep everything nice and clean. The turbo blanket comes with all the springs to kind of secure it down and then all like the little metal wiring to kind of get it all locked in. So this is a V-band setup and it comes with a different size um, adapters, whatever different size turbo you go with. So it'll made up perfectly to the top here. But looking underneath guys, you can see how it's all designed. It's going to be so much easier to get all the hardware onto the head and tighten this thing down and then if you ever have to remove the turbo or do any maintenance or anything on it for a rebuild or anything this is going to be so much simpler of a process than removing the stock twin turbos which take me like about three to four hours to remove after doing it a few times this is just going to simplify everything it's going to clean up the engine bay make everything so much easier to work on like i said and then you're going to get that that big horsepower. So I'm gonna probably be going with like a G35 900 is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna be working with Chris at Spectrum Motorsports to pick up the rest of the turbo kit. And before we do that, we have to sell all this stuff over here. So I'm gonna be selling my brand new box HKS 2530 turbos. I'm gonna be selling my top secret titanium front pipe and my Tomei uh, brand new cast turbo elbow. So if you guys are interested in any of those parts, I will have them linked down below with pricing and everything. I, I will do shipping if you guys are in the US or local pickup. I live near like Tacoma, Seattle and Washington state. The external wastegate is designed to accommodate 44, 45 and 46 millimeter wastegates. The internal wastegate runner is designed to accommodate up to a 50 millimeter wastegate. However, you will have to cut the flange off at the end of it. This manifold is designed to work with as small as a G25 Garrett Turbo all the way up to a G35 1050 or Precision Turbo 6266 and 6466. And if you guys want to go up to their bigger turbo, you can get up to a 70 millimeter V-band. And these will hold all the way up from the Garrett G45 1450 to the G4900. And then the Precision Turbo 6870, 6775, and they're going to be testing for the 8685 soon. And then I haven't decided whether I want to do an external screamer pipe or if I want to reroute that back into the exhaust to kind of keep the car sounding a little bit uh, more tame. Chris at Spectrum Motorsports said he can make the downpipe to go with either a recirc or a screamer pipe for the turbo kits. Leave me some comments. Which way should I go? External wastegate? with screamer pipe or have it recirc back into the downpipe. But huge thumbs up to Artec Performance on the packaging. This thing came all the way from Australia in this nice packaging foam and perfect brand new shape. Same thing on the turbo blanket. Everything was good. Also when you initial start up, there's gonna be a little bit of burn off on the blanket. So keep the bonnet or the hood open.
got one more box over here on the shelf. Let's go ahead and pull it off. I've had this for a few months. I've been waiting to share it with you guys on the channel. stock intake plenum here so I'm gonna probably have that for sale it's been powder coated by UP garage whatever company they use you guys that follow GTR stuff I don't really need to talk too much about the Nismo intake manifold versus the factory one if you guys compare on the back end the big difference is in the runners so Moto video Andrew's already going up going over all this stuff in great detail but this has from the surge tank here you have individual runners for cylinder five and six versus these ones, they kind of merge and they kind of bleed off into it, which makes cylinder six run lean. This is gonna help fix that. We don't want any detonation. And then beyond that, the runners are more balanced versus the factory ones. They're the, they're the same length and they're a little bit longer, which helps pick up a little additional horsepower. And the volume internally, of the surge tank is bigger. I'll just put a link up in the description of Andrew's video from Motive uh, DVD or Motive Video. And he pretty much covers it all in great detail. A simple measurement with water, 3.5 litres is the volume of the factory inlet versus 4.3 litres on the Nismo inlet. So 23% more volume overall. So yeah, look how stubby these runners are where these ones are a little bit longer. Same thing here, more balanced length. And like it was showing where it merges here in the back. The one thing I'm a little frustrated about too is the box that came from Customs. Somebody cut this thing open because you can see how this box is all like taped and retaped when it was going through Customs. And they put like a razor blade or whatever they used to cut it open. They scratched my intake plenum, which I ordered. If you guys want to get one, the, the yen versus the US dollar is still really low. So I only paid like $1,100 for this from Black Hot Japan. I'll put a link in the description down below. I also have a link in the description down below for Artec Performance for the RB26 manifold and the turbo blanket. So when you guys look at the inside of the Nismo, you got like those bell mouths on the uh, runners and that helps with the airflow. So it makes it more efficient. And when you look at the factory one, they don't have that. So that helps uh, with airflow, it helps reduce turbulence, and it helps make more horsepower. But yeah, look at these runners. They're so smooth on the Nismo all the way in. They've been machined out and cleaned out where this has like the, the rough casting marks and stuff on the inside of it. There's like big pits, and there's kind of bumps and stuff in it. Also look at the difference in size of the, the surge tank. It's a lot smaller underneath on the factory one versus this, you can see how much more material on the bottom end. This tank is just way bigger. Wanted to compare the runner size. They're both right over 43 millimeters. And the ITVs measure just over 44. <laughs> got to get up here where torque is starting to match back up. So really, you can see from here onwards, there is more power everywhere on the Nismo inlet. So in summary, what do I think of the Nismo inlet, plenum, collector, whatever you want to call it? I think it works. So when you guys look at the Artec manifold, you're gonna notice a few key things that they did in the design to make this thing flow very quick, efficiently, and keep that turbo response top notch. If you look at the bends, they're long radius bends, 
and also if you look at the runner volume the internal volume is is kept very small it's only 33 millimeters which is going to keep that exhaust gas moving very effectively for the target size turbos that this is designed to hold So this is a solid stainless steel cast manifold. It's made out of 347 stainless steel. It's acid pickled, which leaves that really cool finish to it. it looks awesome. And because of all this, this is the reason I wanted to get one of these for my car, for my build. Well, I think that looks pretty good. I wanted to get everything kind of slightly mocked up, just roughly put together so you guys can see what it's gonna look like with the Nismo intake manifold. I've dreamed of this manifold for multiple years and I've always wanted one and with the Yenda USD I was able to finally afford to buy one and thank you so much to Arctic Performance this one piece solid cast manifold is going to take my car to the next level G35 900 is good for 800 to 900 wheel horsepower I'm not sure exactly everything I'm going to do but this is going to get me on the right path that's going to make all those Super cool sounds that you hear on like the Moda video, like all the Australian GTRs, single turbo. You got the Paul Walker R34, Too Fast, Too Furious, like that HKS turbo that was on there. With those type of cars, I just dream of having a car that makes those types of sounds, because for me, I think it'll be worth the extra effort. The biggest blessing with this manifold, besides the sounds, the thermal efficiency, the horsepower, the way the merge collector and everything comes together, but if you look at the merch collector way down there, you guys can see how smooth it is inside. It's hard to get lighting in there, but it's uh, below, it's down in this point here. And what's essential about that design is it's gonna allow you perfect stable boost pressure and boost control. But this is what I'm most excited for. If you guys have ever removed twin turbos off of RB26, you know how hard it is to get to this hardware through here and all these points. This is gonna be so easy to just get in here for installation or for removal. I can't wait. It's gonna make working on the GTR so much easier. And it's time for some big horsepower, guys. I'm so, so pumped. Thank you so much to Arctic Performance in Australia for sending me this bad boy and working with my channel. I could not be more excited to get the build underway and get this thing put back together finally after two years of it being down. This is a once in a lifetime build for me. This is gonna be huge horsepower. It's gonna be pushing me way past my comfort zone and outside of that area kind of past that anxiety of can I do this am I capable of this and yes I think with the GTR community there's so much information out there and I've got a couple of good reputable shops I'm going to be working with to get this thing back together I think uh, yeah sky's the limit if you got a dream fight for it don't give up and uh, fight for what you want what you believe in and for me this is one of my dreams and we're going to make this happen I'll share it with you guys every step of the way On top of having the heat blanket, I'm also thinking of getting ceramic coat on this to keep the temps even cooler. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think I should ceramic coat it or just go with that heat blanket? And I gotta apologize guys, I almost forgot to show you boys that are thinking of getting the turbo blanket, kind of what it would look like on there. So for heat management, this is gonna be so awesome and you don't have to wrap anything. It's gonna make, you know, installation of the manifold so much easier. You can just take the blanket off, you know, when you're ready to remove it versus having to deal with all the, the wrap. But this is awesome. It's gonna look great. It's got the nice Arctic on there as well again thank you to arctic performance for giving me the chance to work with you guys on my youtube channel the build's going to be awesome i'm going to get things moving forward pretty quickly now i've got a few more projects that i'm obligated to with other parts manufacturers on the 22wx so i got like three more videos install videos i have to push out and then i'll be moving on to gtr content so this is going to be the direction of the channel single turbo 
and uh, yeah, got some parts to sell. I'll be selling the Apexi twin intakes over here. Those are going to go goodbye. Nismo, or not Nismo, but N1 manifolds brand in the box. Never installed. I'll be selling those. That's the part number there. So if you guys need any of that stuff, hit me up. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. It's just kind of a quick update for where I'm at with the GTR, guys. I was hoping to have more content out. But with the 22WX being so popular, it's actually allowed a lot of growth on the channel. I've been getting quite a few views, a lot more subscribers, and partnerships with actual you know, parts companies like Billet Works. I'm working with Perrin Performance. I'm working with the Eibach Suspension Company, as well as Paragon Brakes. But that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And everybody who's been making it to the end of the video is leaving me hashtag family. Hashtag made it to the end. Thank you so much guys. I'll throw a couple of your names up on the screen I appreciate you guys and if you watch to the end of this video Leave me a hashtag to the end so I know I will be back with more content guys. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Take care Step two V cam. No shit. You can't wait to get the bay repainted and have this thing sitting back in the engine bay. RB28 HKS step two with all the goodies.